The human mind is the most powerful tool we possess, yet its immense potential often remains untapped. In his profound message, Earl Nightingale highlights the mind as an undiscovered gold mine, capable of transforming our lives when used effectively. He challenges us to rethink how we approach our goals, problems and time, emphasizing that success is not a matter of luck or circumstances, but the result of deliberate, disciplined mental effort. Nightingale's framework centers on setting clear, written goals and dedicating just one hour a day to focused thinking, such as generating ideas for improving our work. This simple yet powerful habit activates the subconscious mind, fosters creativity, and drives consistent progress. He reframes problems as challenges that are not only solvable but necessary for growth, reminding us that successful people excel not because they lack problems, but because they master the art of solving them. Additionally, Nightingale exposes the futility of worrying about things beyond our control, encouraging us to focus on actionable solutions. Drawing on humanity's rapid advancements, he illustrates how the mind is the source of all innovation and progress. Ultimately, he inspires us to take control of our destinies by harnessing the limitless potential of the human mind. Here's Earl Nightingale on his secret to success. I want to tell you about a plan you can follow which takes only one hour a day, five days a week, and which brings results out of all proportion to the time spent. We talked about the vital necessity of a goal to give you a clearer picture of the potential represented by the proper use of your mind. For a moment, consider the things your mind has brought you. Everything you have, your job, the money you earn, everything you own has come to you as a result of using your mind. The way most people use their minds can be compared to the time back in the early 19th century when just the eastern coast of the North American continent was settled, just a strip along the coast. To the west, there stretched the raw, undeveloped great bulk of what was later to become the incredibly rich 90% of the economy and standard of living we enjoy today. This message will show you how to use infinitely more of your mental powers. None of us, as a rule, has the slightest notion of the capabilities of his mind. But believe me when I say that your mind represents what can be compared to an undiscovered gold mine. And it makes no difference if you're 17 or 70. Look at it this way. Your goal is in the future. Your problem is to bridge the gap which exists between where you are now and the goal you intend to reach. This is the problem to solve. So now remember this. It was written by Robert Seashore, chairman of the Department of Psychology of Northwestern University. He said, successful people are not people without problems. They are simply people who have learned to solve their problems. And there you have it. Living successfully, getting the things we want from life is a matter of solving the problems which stand between where we now are and the point we wish to reach. No one is without problems. They're a part of living. But let me show you how much time we waste in worrying about the wrong problems. Here's a reliable estimate of the things people worry about. Things that never happen, 40%. Things over and past that can't be changed by all the worry in the world, 30%. Needless worries about our health. 12%, petty miscellaneous worries, 10%, and real, legitimate worries, 8%. In short, 92% of the things the average person worries about take up valuable time and unnecessary worry. And of the real, legitimate worries, there are two kinds. There are the problems we can solve, and there are the problems beyond our ability to personally solve. But about 95% of our real problems can usually be said to fall into the first group, the ones we can solve, if we'll learn how. There must be millions of people today who feel they're being barred from the life they want because they look upon problems not as challenges to be solved, but as bottomless chasms beyond their ability to bridge. A little research proves that successful people have the same kind of problems. So the whole thing boils down to a matter not of problems, which are common to us all, but of our ability to solve them. Now, I'm going to assume you've decided upon your goal. Your problem is, how do I achieve it? Your goal may be a promotion, a greater income, a beautiful home. It makes little difference what your goal happens to be. For a youngster, it could be better grades in school. For a secretary, a trip around the world. But you have your goal, and you know that 
you will become what you think about. That is, if you stay with it, you will reach your goal. But how? It's right here that your mind comes into play. Now, what is your mind? I think the best way to describe it is to quote something written by the great Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Archibald MacLeish. He wrote, The only thing about a man that is a man is his mind. Everything else you can find in a pig or a horse. This is absolutely true. The human mind is the one thing that separates us from the rest of the creatures on earth. Everything that means anything to us comes to us through our minds. Our love of our families, our religion, all of our knowledge, talents, abilities, everything is reflected through our minds. Anything that comes to us in the future will come to us as a result of the extent to which we use our minds. And yet, and I know you'll agree with me here, it is the last place on earth to which the average human being will turn for help. Our work has hidden within it untold opportunities. The same is true of our minds, but only if we will use them. In order to reflect just a moment on the human mind, consider what it has accomplished. As you do, realize that we are developing so rapidly that we have come farther in the realm of progress in the past 50 years than in all the preceding centuries of human civilization. Of all the scientists who ever lived, it is estimated that 90% of them are alive today. We have reached in the area of ideas and human advancement a plateau so high it was undreamed of by even the most optimistic forecasters as recently as 10 years ago. But every new idea triggers additional ideas, so that now we're in an era of compounding advancement on every front and in every area that almost staggers the imagination. From the rockets which probe the deep outer reaches of the universe to the great bridges which span our rivers, everything man-made you see and touch spawned from the most powerful agency in the world, the human mind, and you own one. Let me remind you of something. The 40-hour week has become fairly standard and is an imminent likelihood of being even further shortened. This means that the average working person has at his disposal a really enormous amount of free time. In fact, if you will total the hours he works and sleeps, counting weekends and holidays and vacations, and subtract them from the total waking hours of a year, you'll be amazed to find that of the 5,840 waking hours, if he sleeps eight hours every night, he spends only 1,912 on the job. This leaves him with 3,928, almost 4,000 hours a year when he is neither working nor sleeping. These could be called discretionary hours with which he can do as he pleases. Now, so that you can see the amazing results in your own life, I want to recommend that you take just one hour a day, five days a week, and devote this hour to exercising your mind. And remember what Archibald MacLeish said about it. It's your most valuable possession. It deserves some attention. Pick one hour a day upon which you can count. The best time is an hour before the family's up in the morning, at least it is for me. The mind is clear, the house is quiet, and if you like, with a fresh cup of coffee, this is the time to start the mind going. And here's how you do it. During this hour every day, take a completely blank sheet of paper. At the top of the page, write your goal, clearly, simply. Then, since our future depends upon the way in which we handle our work, write down 20 ideas for improving that which you now do for a living. 20 possible ways in which the work which fills your working day can be improved. Now remember two important points with regard to this. One, this is not particularly easy. And two, most of your ideas won't be any good. Now when I say it's not easy, I mean it's like starting any new habit. At first, you'll find your mind a little reluctant to be hauled up and out of the old familiar rut. But as you think about your work and ways in which it might be improved, write down every idea that pops into your mind, no matter how absurd it might seem. Now I'll tell you what'll happen. Some of your ideas will be good and worth testing on the job. The most important thing this extra hour accomplishes, however, is that it deeply embeds your goal into your subconscious mind, starts the whole vital machinery working the first thing every morning, and 20 ideas a day total 100 a week, even if you don't think on weekends. In doing this, you'll find that your mind will continue to work all day long. You'll find that at odd moments when you least expect it, really great ideas will begin to pop into your mind. When they do, write them down as soon as you can. Remember, 
Just one great idea can completely revolutionize your work. If you wanted to develop the muscles of your body, you'd take daily exercise of some sort. The mind is developed in the same way, except that the returns, as I said in the beginning, are out of all conceivable proportion to the time and energy spent. The mind of man can lift anything. His muscles, even the best developed, are puny alongside those of some of the dumbest animals on earth. If man had depended on his muscles for survival, he probably would have disappeared as did the dinosaurs, which incidentally were the most physically powerful creatures that ever lived. I've used this system for years, and it has given me some of the most gratifying and rewarding experiences of my life. And it costs only five hours a week. Five out of 168. Is it worth it? It's like spending five hours a week digging in a solid vein of pure gold. Because your mind is all of that, and so much more. Each time you write your goal at the top of the sheet of paper, don't worry or become concerned about it. Think of it as only waiting to be reached, a problem only waiting to be solved. Face it with faith and bend all the great powers of your mind toward solving it. And believe me, solve it, you will. This puts each of us in the driver's seat. We're no longer passengers aboard a train guided by some vague and nameless fate or circumstance. But rather, we're engineers on a predetermined trip of our own choosing to the destination of our own selection. Now, let's briefly recap. One. For the next month, spend one hour a day getting as many ideas as you can. Try at least 20 a day on ways to improve what you now do for a living, realizing that the achievement of your goal depends upon it, as does your whole future. If you do, I think you'll want to continue the practice. Two, if everything you now have is the result of using, say, 10% of your mental ability, you can imagine what life will be like if you can increase this figure to 15 or 20% or more. Three, Successful people are not people without problems. They are simply people who have learned to solve their problems. Four, don't waste time and energy worrying about needless things. 40% of them will never happen. 30% have already happened and can't be changed. 12% are needless worries about our health. 10% are petty miscellaneous worries. And only 8% of them are real. Try to separate the real from the unnecessary and solve those which are within your ability to solve. Five, the human race has advanced farther during the past 50 years than in all the preceding centuries of human civilization. We're now living right in the middle of the golden age man has been dreaming of and praying for for centuries, and it's going to get better. Last of all, the only thing in the world that can take you to your goal in life is your mind, its effective use, and following through on the good ideas it supplies you. Each of us has a tendency to underestimate our own abilities. We should realize that we have, deep within ourselves, a reservoir of genius that can be tapped if we'll just dig deep enough. It's the miracle of your mind.